What is up, Stokers? We have a combo that you have never seen before. This is Kevin Fard, the Schmoll, and Joe. This is the Schmoll and the biggest dink in the West, possibly the East, too. So make sure you stick around for this episode. Also, uh, we are on tour, so go to chatjt.com for dates. We're coming to St. Louis next. We got uh, Sacramento. We got San Francisco coming up. We got Portland. We got Florida. So psyched for that. So uh, get your tickets at chatjt.com. Also, get some discussion going in the Reddit. Chad goes deep Reddit. And that's it for this week. Let's start the show. What's with you? sick it's great, great. yeah Love give it up really for good. schmoll daddy everyone it's a great song dude that was actually really good i was i was vibing to that oh yeah just leave it there that's my baby that sounded like dong matthew's band all right oh i didn't put the mic up <laughs> did, did bob dylan write that song and then Jimi hendrix did it or is it a Jimi hendrix no i think that's all along the watchtower that you're thinking right. of did he write hey joe uh, i think hey, joe I think it, it's an old song. I could be right. Yeah. It's like a, a like an old blues song. Biggest hits are covers, right? For Hendrix. Mm -hmm. I mean, he always does them better. But I think he might have been topped in that instance. Who who yeah. might have been topped? I think you might have topped Hendrix. I don't know about that. Well, I, <laughs> I, I can guarantee that. Hendrix never wrote the lyric "shoot load." You might have talked about loads. We'd have you to think do so? some. Yeah, you gotta know. listen to the "Are You Experienced." I haven't seen his uh, a transcription, but "Shooting Your Load." I don't think that was in Voodoo, Voodoo Child. It's from the Leaves. Uh, the Leaves wrote it. Nice. Now we don't have monitors here, but we're good. We're good. We're good. We, we're, okay. There's monitors oh, okay. on. Yeah, you monitors. can see yourself on. No, that. not not. Uh, I'm sound monitors. Oh no! Oh, you got can, headphones. You can listen. Put headphones. Yeah, on. yeah. But what's up, Stokers of Stoke Nation? Good this news. is Chad Kroger coming in with the Going Deep Chad JT podcast. I'm here with my compadre, Jean Thomas. What up? Boom clap, Stokers. We're here with uh, the biggest dong in the West, Mr. Joe Marisi. Yo, guys. And we're Great here beer. We're here with the reigning king of the schmoles, Kevin Fard. Howdy. And this is our final recording in this studio. I'm saying goodbye to this apartment. This seems like a fitting farewell. Our, I'm literally the movers are coming at two thirty. Yeah, everything's fall, everything everything's up. falling off the walls. Are the movers tilted? Hot? Did you did you ask him like who they're sending over? Some buff. Guys? I met the guy yesterday because he helped me move a couch for a friend who took a couch. Does he look like he can handle the load? Like, could you come in him? No, like the your. Oh, the size of the apartment? Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's strong as fuck. Yeah? Gabe, big dude. Just one dude? Two guys, two guys. Oh, okay. Is he going to be wearing, did you say, can you wear a tank top or shirt? No, you don't, you don't I, care? I told him to wear um, like a one piece. Okay, so he did have a conversation about his... Attire? Yeah, okay. yeah I think it's important. Yeah, I like to look on Yelp. How would you dress if you were moving? Um... Bottoms, I think I would go with what I'm wearing right now. This is a Vuari. You guys know about Vuari? I never I'm heard not it. a spokesman. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's like Viore. Sorry, yeah. Viore. 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 Like I don't that. say it right, but it's it's like the Lululemon for men. Yeah. That's what I like. Lululemon to has men's stuff. Yeah, but I'm... It looks I'm a, great. I'm a Viore. Viore. <laughs> I'm, I'm this guy. I'm, 
I've I'm on this side. Nice. And it's you guys want to feel it? Sure. It's nice and soft. Now imagine wearing that. Imagine that cuffing normal. your balls. Joe, feel it. So it's oh, wow. It's yeah, technically like called that. a jogger. Mm -hmm. I think it's a jogger because it tapers. Tapers at the end. Yeah. Um you can lounge in it. Apparently you're it's supposed to be for working out or jogging, but I don't do that in it. I don't mm -hmm. want to get it dirty. You don't mm -hmm. want to get sweat in there. Yeah. So I, I would like wear that. Clean. And then yeah, I would wear a tank top, but one of those really thin tank tops so you can see like most of the pecs. You mm -hmm. know, so basically like your nipples popping out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll just be busting through. And you're sporting the Dilf shirt right now. Yeah, I got it for Christmas. <laughs> Did you really? I figured I didn't it's the only place I can wear it. Who got it for you? Uh my sister. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah, you can't really wear that push in the stroller. Well, when you could. Actually, it could be appropriate. You guys like it? Yeah. Yeah, I like that shirt. Oh, Have you worn a push lettering. in the stroller? I haven't worn this pushing a stroller, but when I'm pushing the stroller, I think it screams out Dilf that mm -hmm. you don't even need the shirt. Yeah, that's true. Right, the kid does the yeah. most to work for yeah. you. Harris, you know, people thought that was a bit. What? The Harrison Fard thing. Yeah, like, I've heard that from people as well. They're oh. like, "There's no way he named his yeah, kid that." Yeah, they think that. it's a joke. Oh, and who's saying there's no way? The are these people Just with some kids? Some of the listeners. Some of the listeners. Oh, okay. Some of the 14 year olds. You think I'm lying to you? Yeah. Why would I lie about the name? <laughs> I think I, our I, demo skews 25 to 35. Oh, okay. If we're being I, a little more accurate, I think because they learn <laughs> that Chad's name was Tom. Oh yeah, you're right. They they took they took from that kernel of a. Uh, of like Hollywoodification, that everything let's keep it a mystery. A so everything's I, BS. I yeah. Don't, yeah, your listeners don't need to know my son's name anyway, so it could be uh, uh, real or it could be fake. Who knows? They don't need to know his name. Yeah, yeah they don't. So, really. but his name is Harrison Fard. Yeah. But are we doing a bit or are we not? No, we're not doing a bit. <laughs> I don't know. They don't. Maybe know. we Maybe are. It could be. A bit. Maybe we are doing a bit. If you watch. Air Force One with your son yet? No, we haven't watched. Um, actually, we haven't watched any of those movies with him yet. I, I don't think you should ever show him a Harrison Ford movie, and I think you should let him discover on his own that his name is similar to a Hollywood icon. So, like when he's like eight, yeah, he'll come home I mean, and be like, "Yeah, I love that." Let, like, let him figure home. it out. He'll be like, be "Dad, cool. did you know about this?" Like he'll have like uh, you know his phone up, and he'll be like, you know, Harrison Ford and Indian Jones, and then I think you should go. No, I had no idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, I like that a lot. We didn't like, we didn't name him as an, uh, it wasn't like, oh, Harrison Ford is a badass. He is a badass, but it wasn't like, oh, let's name him after this. We were going through all the first names and then Harrison was the first like name that we sort of both really liked. And then it took like a few minutes and then we're like, Harrison Ford, oh, and then, oh, oh, it still sounds pretty cool. Right, it works. It is do cool. You, but do you think but it's, we call him Harry. Do you think it sounds cool? cool sometimes i think names work because there's an established uh connotation to that name so do you think harrison fard sounded i think it's a good name independent of that but do you think it sounded better because in your subconscious it sounded like harrison ford and you're like that's a strong uh connotation possibly but also has a rhythm so bump 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 harrison fard yeah like, i think the syllable matchup is yeah. nice so it really yeah. was the first name independent of daddy's last name and then meld together i thought it was cool um we think it's cool we like harry my whole family likes it they call him harry um he's i'm assuming he's going to be go by harry um and the, your, but, your second choice was paul newman fard right uh actually my uh my <laughs> paul second newman being one name yes my second yeah. choice was burt lancaster fard oh. <laughs> both great names i like that <laughs> Joe, and you said you like that chair more. You're in you're in the throne right now. Yeah, I feel like dynamic in this chair. I feel like more mobile. The couch usually my sack gets like uh You seem dynamic. I feel like I sit on my sack when I'm on the couch. Do you So I like this here. Do you accidentally sit on your dong sometimes where it just like gets under your ass? Yeah, I've had that and I think you had this once was the the epididymitis. Oh, I've had a huge sack. Yeah. I had that because I was uh, back when I did like Uber and Lyft a lot. You got epididymitis? And I would sit down so much. Yeah, sitting on my on my sack all day. Yeah, yeah. So your your nut got infected because you're sitting on it. Too yeah, much? Whoa. yeah. But yeah, what, you gotta watch that. Gotta how watch. does this couch make you sit on your sack? Can you describe? Because I feel like it doesn't. There's not a lot of give to it. 
So your sack <laughs> just really kind of sits up. Right. Your sack doesn't go down into the couch with the with your ass. That I st- I have no idea what you're talking about. Your to be sack honest. is like is a your sack plant. comfortable. Sack. I mean, my sack's not touching the, the couch. Sun. All right. Well, you well maybe you have better support in your uh, undies. Maybe I need that. Maybe that's what it is. Well, what are you maybe. wearing? I'm wearing Hanes, uh, Hanes boxer briefs. That's black. what I'm wearing. That's what I'm wearing, dude. I've converted to one underwear. What? And I, I think I've got my whole, it's all just one underwear. It's a Calvin Klein. And it's the, I think they're called boxer briefs. Like this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's like a specific one. See that how smooth it is? And it's, oh, that's nice. it's, it's probably, yeah. it's probably not, like the manscaped it's, kind. Yeah, it's not loose right here. Um, but it's not too tight. So it, it goes down like a boxer brief. Is that boxer brief? Is mm-hmm. that what they call it? Yeah. yeah. And the Calvin Klein brand is very soft and luxurious. And I just... Yeah, that sounds like the Manscaped ones, I too. I stick with them. Saw it nice and soft. Yeah. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I have an announcement. Yeah. <laughs> that's the best good place as any to start. I'm going to retire. I'm not going to... The whole podcast... We've already talked about cock and sack. We're done. I'm a respected father and lawyer, and I'm not going to talk about dick or sack for this whole episode. Bullshit. The rest of the episode. Bullshit. No dong talk? No dong talk. I don't see do that happening. Do you think I happen. can do it? Well, what I, are we going to talk about? <laughs> I'm, I'm curious what uh, motivated you to, to take on that challenge. Uh, I, just, I, I just felt it uh, a few minutes ago. I just felt... I felt like I need to I need to get off the cock. Mm. That, that that would be breaking my rule. I need I need to grow. I need to be a clean comedian. Mm. Okay? And I need to talk about more mature stuff. Shoot. Okay? I can't just fall back on dick. Do you think well, do you think also I noticed you talked about and we can pivot off of this cuz it's it's kind of in violation of your aspiration but do you think covid and being in quarantine made dicks did you want to talk about dicks more because of that <laughs> just being around your own dick so much no yeah what what is the basis of that what why do you think it would make me want to talk about dicks just more? anecdotal observation from my end I noticed that when COVID happened and you went into lockdown, your brain went dicks. Oh, no, no. No, I think it was prior to that for a while. I I know what you're saying, but it's incorrect. It wasn't dick. It was sack that you saw me sort of teabagging. It was was sack. A lot of of bagging. I mean, I I put it all under... You might be right. And I might not have been... I might not have been hyper-observant to it, but I feel like everything under that umbrella... Um, I mean, if you're saying the sack amplified the dick, then I wouldn't argue with you on that. I have no idea if that's what I'm saying. If you're saying my focus on sack also mm-hmm. made me amp up my focus on dick. I just, I just, I, 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 I would like check Instagram and I click on Kevin and it was dick. Hmm. But, do you and, mean but what do you mean by dick? Like singing a song about Joe's dick? Just talking about dick, singing right. about dicks. Yeah, I have another, emphasizing I have an, the dick. I have another announcement. <laughs> I'm ba- uh, my sabbatical on dick is over. Yeah, I, was, uh, I I thought it would be a an interesting bit to try, but I'm really not interested, and I I don't even know what I would want to talk with you guys about. What a no 180. Offense. Well, how's how's? But I, I want to talk about. No, it. I think that's I think that's the right choice. Yeah. I mean, I didn't get much support on that. You went straight into a dick question. No, I'm supportive. I'd I'd love to try it. Yeah. Well, I remember when I showed you teabagging in Halo. Yeah. I think that I, I, that sparked. It was through yeah. the headphones. A literal. I heard a light turn on. But let's hold on. I I've been talking about, constantly talking about dick before that. I even had yeah. in law school I had a roommate and he got drunk and he freaked out on me because he's like, oh, you fucking talk about his dicks. Like he he had a meltdown on me, <laughs> so um, it's it's been a part of my life. Did, so how did you respond when he <laughs> snapped like that? Uh, I didn't get angry or anything. I maybe I laughed or something. We were playing beer pong or something. Did you hear him? Huh? Did you hear him? 
I mean, I understand because, you know, he's not a, a comedian. So it might be a lot of dick talk. But on the other hand, what what would you like me to focus on? I don't know. I've, I've, I think it's just one of those moments he was uh, he was drunk and he was letting loose. Right. Like, uh, I'll give you another example. When people are drunk and they say stuff. And you think when people are drunk, they say stuff that they deep down inside mean. But uh, I'm not going to name names here. But there's a person who... Um, and I, I'm not going to name the name, but there's a person who, uh, is a comedian and they work at like one of the clubs and we were, uh, <laughs> they were drunk. We were at one of the parties and we were drunk. And then she just comes up to me randomly and says, Hey, Kevin, you know, I noticed that you don't say hi to me enough. You know, I, I noticed you don't say hi to me enough. You're around all my friends. Uh, you're saying hi to them, but you, you don't make an effort to say hi to me. And I felt like really like, oh my God, I should say hi. I don't say hi to anybody, but I should say hi to this person more. That is true. He's Kevin's very to himself. Doesn't I don't really see him going up to people. Hey, what's going on? It's not his thing. And then last night, yeah. I made it a point. Say hi. I said hi to her. Completely fucking ignored me. Then I went up to her and I said, hey, you said that I should say hi to you more. I said hi to you today. You didn't say hi to me. She said, I didn't mean that. I was just drunk. Interesting. Oh, wow. So she didn't want me to say hi to her, which is what I wanted in the first place. <laughs> I, well, I think that when you, the truth comes out, so I think that's what she wants. Maybe she felt embarrassed when she sobered up. So you think my friend really doesn't want me? You know, I understand. I talk about dick a lot. You know, imagine Stephanie's life. She's, I'm, I'm, I'm not toning down my dick talk around her. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. No. I mean, she, it just comes with the package. What, when she, I mean, it was in, she knew what Yeah. What I was, was talking about, I'm not... I'm not a fake person. Did, do you, you know, you, on... Sometimes I find too people, and I guess in my case, I'm more sensitive towards it when it's women. So I notice it more in those instances. But sometimes people are like, you know, I wish you did this more. And then you'll do it. And then they'll be like, they don't actually, like they, they're confused as to what they want a little bit. Mm. Well, I yeah. see myself having, uh, I, I don't make the eye, best eye contact or say hi to everybody at comedy clubs, but especially when it comes to women, shouldn't that be a positive now? Right? Yeah. It so my problem is I don't, I don't get close to the women. It, it, you know, the people with the problems are the people saying hi to the women and going further. It is the guys who say hi that are the problem. I'm not yeah. talking to, I'm not talking to any of them. Okay. There's, there's no DMS. You're not going to find any DMS from daddy I, in a, a yeah, yeah. I, I think we're all trying to navigate that middle space between, you know, I and I'm actually I was going to make a joke, but it is a true thing where even if I meet, I, I think I'm too in my head about it, but sometimes when I'll meet like female fans after a show and we take photos, I'm not like sure how to put my arms around them. You right. know? So sometimes I'm too like tight on my body and I'm like, I'm like, there's going to be no evidence yeah. that I was like being frisky at all. So I'll take photos like with like, my elbows locked to my hips and my hands like <laughs> yeah. fixed in the shaka. Yeah. And then I'm like, bro, I think you're being a little over correcty. Like, and so most of the time I wait for them to kind of initiate, but they're kind of waiting for you to initiate cause they're there to see you. So it is a, it's not like if you're an anxious or neurotic person, I think we can get into our heads and write stories that we think they're going to maybe tell later. But in reality, it's like, I think the people who get in trouble for stuff are the people who are like, you know, not just talking about dicks, which I think is an art form that we have a couple masters of here, but I think whipping it out and making it come is where you generally get into trouble. Mm. I think too, that shows at a meet and greets, you know, <laughs> you're, mm, mm. it's an intellectual conversation. I got my legs crossed. It was a breakthrough. Yeah. I, I, at meet and greets, yeah, I've gone a step further. If a girl tries to touch me, I'll slap her. I'll be like, get away. Yeah, I saw you put your hands up. Like, you yeah. slapped it away like a jab, and then you yeah. went into a fighting position. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I was like, you know, I think we, we might have... Yeah. And I, I respected it, because I like that you've developed that... You've yeah. cultivated that instinct for violence. Yeah. But I was like, this could get us into trouble, too. Yeah. It's like, it's it's uh, you cross the line between being too cautious to where now I'm physically attacking people. Yeah. And then when when you, you were staring at, she was like 45 and yeah. there with her son. Yeah. And you said, 
you literally looked at her and you said, we just doing hands or feet included too? Exactly. And you were like establishing the kind of terms of combat. Yeah. I was like, boxing, Krav Maga, what are we doing? Yeah. You were like, pick pick your death. Yeah. And she's like, I thought we were doing a meet and greet. And I'm like, this is like. Yeah. You're like, you're about to meet and get greeted to death. Yeah. I don't like to be touched. But did you, (laughs) but then you banged her after that, right? Uh, yeah. I, uh. (laughs) All right. <laughs> well her son was dying it was his last request it was a uh it was a sort of make a wish thing should, um, should we call my friend the the one and see if he, he if you what he really thought about that i mean i think if you guys are playing beer pong dick talk is more than appropriate yeah i mean totally but now i'm concerned uh, we don't have to let's uh continue on uh, yeah, that's bulge oh thanks Thanks what, for, did, thanks you, for looking. did you guys watch the? Uh, do you watch football? Yeah, I was. A, that was an awful weekend. Yeah, his team was playing. Oh, yeah, you're a Niners, Niners fan. Yeah, yeah, that was tough. I man. just don't like the the whole the drop led to every, like he the in the one of the opening drives the Philadelphia player dropped a ball. The ref. Oh yeah, it. they didn't challenge. Then it. they didn't yeah. challenge it, but and then. If that sequence of events didn't happen, the quarterback probably wouldn't have pretty when I got injured. So yeah, it was a big um, play right there. Yeah, I turned the game on in the third quarter, and I saw Purdy was four for four for 23 yards, and I was like, what the fuck is going on? Someone must have got hurt. And then, I mean, the circumstance, he gets hurt, then the backup gets hurt. Yeah. And then they got to throw know. his ass back in there. It wasn't, it was one of the worst and he has a weekends for, for like the conference championships I've ever seen. Like both yeah. games were underwhelming for well, different reasons. The second game was good, though. You know, it, it was good, but it, see, and, and Mahomes gutted it out, but him being on a bum ankle i was like we're not getting the full spectacle oh, right. in either yeah. in either game how bad's his ankle it was a high ankle sprain you most guys when they get that they're in a boot for like a month to a month and a half yeah. so i think a lot of people are uh kind of speculating that he got some yeah, kind of crazy treatment that uh not something they would disclose is he do you think he'll be at 100 percent for the super bowl I think he'll be at like sixty to seventy percent, but him at yeah. sixty to seventy percent is still the best quarterback in the league. I think. The yeah, Eagles. yeah, and the Eagles team is fucking stacked. They're yeah. good at every position. Yeah, and their quarterback he got like benched in college and he transferred. He's he's a really easy guy to root for. I, I don't know what it is, but I always kind of root for the Eagles. I don't know if that's against like sports, but I I, I don't know. I always feel like they're the some of the most passionate fans. So it's kind of cool By to far. see that town win they're lunatics i mean i'm not yeah. inspired by their fans the, the, the guy ate shit after they won the oh maybe, yeah maybe i just love silver linings playbook oh uh, yeah you yeah i think that's the movie. Oh, someone well, ate yeah. shit yeah well i forgot yeah, shit how do you what do you do i heard them it? talking about it on the, <laughs> i think shit. like stern or something that this guy just ate shit yeah. yeah he just ate a piece of shit i don't know if it, i think it was after they won the super bowl he just went on the street and ate a piece of shit <laughs> oh my gosh yeah aren't those people worth rooting for i think so they care I yeah, mean, I don't, what was the correlation between the eating shit and the? He was excited, like he's like, "I'm so happy, I'm gonna eat." I think that's what it what was. A brain. Like, what? It was a, a joyous, Study like that. I'm gonna eat shit. So I'm so happy amped to eat up. Shit. I'm just gonna. Eat. I think he picked up like a cow shit or something. You know what? Or I'm a, I'm a betting. Shit. I'm betting he does that all the I'm time, good. and he was just waiting for a moment where he felt like it would be justified. Yeah, he could like go that public guy. You don't think he's walking with, down the street on most days and just looking for turds? To he really mind. He yeah. enjoys Central Park. That's his favorite. That was the first time we saw it. You yeah. know, it's like that was the first time it was filmed. But that guy's been eating shit. No. probably consistently yeah. since he's like seven. Yeah, he's like, oh yeah, on Sundays I have it with a nice cabernet. And he just and his wife cuts it up. His wife was like. She probably doesn't let him eat shit, but after they won the Super Bowl, she's like, "You got the green light today, honey. Eat all the." Eat. And it was horse manure. <laughs> That's his whole. He, he ate horse shit. Oh, um, yeah, God. I didn't see the video. I'm not clear if it was fresh horse shit or like I think it was a patty, like a dried out. One. Oh God, patty like yeah. a burger. Oh, yeah, Joe, you, would you eat? A, what do we have to pay you to eat a piece of horse shit? I, I couldn't. You that, couldn't. A hundred thousand. You're not eating a piece of horse shit. It's mostly grass. I mean, is it a huge log? Yeah, it's it's like this. It's like a hamburger. Like Let's a, say we put it in a bun with some mayonnaise and uh, pickles and however you like your bur- animal style, like truly animal style, with the horse shit in it, and then the animal style stuff. I don't know. It'd be tough. I I mean, maybe drunk. I would have to get drunk. Okay. Okay, you're drunk. I'm giving you twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand with crispy onions on top. 
and the Ponzi. So That's a nice tax, touch. Tax free. Yeah, crispy onions that could sway me. I, all right, and there. The, crispy would, onion, maybe some barbecue sauce and could you're be good. With blow the, job with the horse. Somebody will give you a blow job. A female. Okay, I'm in. If you if the Bears won the Super Bowl, would you do a Joe eats with horse? Shit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. Hey, welcome to Joe Eats. I got horse shit today. It'd be a good episode. <laughs> oh, maybe that can be one of your guys' uh, draft things. Best animal shit to eat. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we'll animal, you guys animal, animal shit draft. draft. Yeah. yeah, animal shit. Horse shit, cow shit, dog shit. <laughs> I wouldn't eat cat shit. Human shit. You ever guys walk by human shit and it like, has a distinct smell? Mm-hmm. Like you walk by dog shit, and but then you walk by like a... Because the homeless guys are shitting yeah, all over. Yeah, the sidewalk. And you, ha- you can smell, you know it's human. I Yeah, I feel right. like I know I think it it's biological, human. right? Because yeah. we have a, it's like a territory thing. Like, we know a, a human has been here. So, like, don't go here. Marking yeah. territory. That's what I think, because I have a vile reaction when I, I know, I can tell the difference between uh, human shit and dog shit. Hmm. You know, I'm so proud of you, man. <laughs> that I know, <laughs> that I know these things. <laughs> You know that, like, you took on this tremendous challenge to not talk cock, and I'm feeling that same passion for shit. <laughs> oh, you think I, I I'm like a drug addict where I uh, I stop drugs, but now I'm really into smoking cigarettes. Like now a little, I'm in shit. Little addiction whack a mole. I just have we been how long have we been talking about shit? <laughs> At least ten minutes. <laughs> did I bring up the shit? You did. Yes. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Well, what the fuck do you guys want to talk about here? Yeah, I, honestly, I, I actually, I, I, I I'm I mean, excited who's hosting? for your, I'm excited for your son. Because <laughs> if, I, if, if, if my dad were to come up to me and just want to talk about dick and shit all day, that'd be the most fun childhood ever. Yeah, you're gonna be. I was thinking about this. Yeah, like you're gonna be such a great dad, not just because of that, but that's part of it. But like yesterday, we were talking about getting zen, right? Yeah, and yeah. you were like, I might hit Disney World. Yeah, yeah. Like, imagine how amped your kids are gonna be oh yeah yeah like oh. most dads don't like going to disneyland or disney like, world yeah that. you love it oh, surprise yeah, yeah. trip oh he does yeah, yeah Kevin's well, I, not I, disney i don't want to i haven't been there since the 90s and i have no desire to just go with I'll, a I'll line take, of you want to take him i'll take him oh fucking thank god yeah, yeah. take him take stephanie i'll stay home <laughs> jack off yeah well yeah i never understood the adults going to disneyland thing oh the, a lot of people are like obsessed like yeah it's weird a lot of her co-workers like that's all they talk about is disneyland apparently really ah that's just uh, uh, we gotta take him to disneyland I, I, I it's it just doesn't sound like a fun experience does it have you guys been recently I, yeah uh, no i mean i know they have like bars there you could drink and stuff but the lines but, right yeah it just seems like it'd be too many people and i hear you it's nostalgic for me. Well, isn't that nice? No, defend, defend your. You love you Disney. You like to go I, I the, 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 the yeah, teacup and the... uh, yeah. Now I'm, now I'm triggered. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, no, I love Disneyland. Yeah, yeah what do you want? Those get... teacup guys yeah, or something? Teacup guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds lame, man. Why don't you just go to? <laughs> no, dude, I'm fucking. The fair. <laughs> what I you love like, churros. What you I like... love Tomorrowland. I love California Adventure. Tomorrowland. Love... Yeah, Tomorrowland. I love to go on Space Mountain. I love. I want to go to Disney World. I want to go on the Everest roller coaster. I want to go on the Avatar ride. Oh, there's Bunch an Everest roller coaster. Yeah, and you're never gonna ride it because you're too much of a hater. Like Mount Everest. No. Yeah, probably. Yeah, no. sounds pretty. Um, <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Give him not. Don't give him an answer. <laughs> well, I guess the big debate then is like, because you're not, you don't watch football on Sundays. You'd rather go to Disneyland. Oh, for sure. Uh, I, I, I'm more of a sports guy, but I think you could argue. That Disneyland is more mature than liking sports on Sunday. Hmm. How so? Well, because like liking sports, you're just rooting for these random people you don't know who are gigantic. Yeah. And obviously it has a long history and I think it's wired into our DNA and I love it. But you don't know these guys. You're rooting for like Seinfeld said laundry. Like you, you don't really have a connection to the players or the team other than geographical, but there's not much consistency there that they're not from that place. And you're just like living and dying off these random dudes Mm -hmm. playing a game that's totally made up. And like football is like the most arbitrary. It has like 9 million rules. It's a three hour game. There's like 11 minutes of action. It's like, and I, I find meaning in like, you know, it's a battle and it's, it's a test of will and intelligence and athleticism, but Going to Disneyland and having fun on a roller coaster and then eating a churro and being surrounded by joy, that to me 
if you were an alien would make more sense than rooting for football. Like worshiping a giant mouse. That's all make believe. Well, is that too. is that that different than worshiping like a a giant tight end? No, but I can sit on my couch and enjoy it. worship that uh, giant tight end and not wait. It is more line. passive. I don't want to yeah. even go to the. To be honest, like going to the SoFi seems like a, a hellish. Oh experience. yeah, if we get into parking and like the uh, in and out logistics, yeah. I mean, I'll start uh, stressing about it now. Yeah, even I, if I, the I, game's in next September, it's the I, people that I'm concerned about. All the people. Well, I guess just to to add to your argument, it's it's more like you're you're enjoying the experience of your life by going to Disneyland. You're having the experience. It's first person. Whereas in sports, you're watching other people live their lives, and you're you're sort of yeah, you're just living. watching them live their lives. And yeah, I think there's... and dudes get massively depressed about it. Yeah, like if. Uh, where it's like what are you doing like a Philly fan or someone from like a city with like real like heart in their sports like you see one of those people after they lose a game like yeah. not the players the just the fan yeah who lives 2,000 miles away from that place now and they're depressed for can go two days yeah and I, I love yeah. it I, I like that it's that meaningful to people because it, it adds to the stakes but it's good, but I don't like getting that so, invested. I try not to. Yeah, Joe, yeah, Joe, Joe be... cried after him and Adam cried after the Bears lost in the uh, playoffs. Was it? <laughs> no, I don't yeah, think we were so. At the bar, and then they they missed that field goal. Right? Wasn't there a playoff game where they missed yeah, the field goal? Yeah, the, the double. Oh my dunk. god, you guys were like, you, you, it was it was a sad sight. <laughs> I don't remember. On I the remember. Verge of tears. I remember. I was wearing that Bears sombrero that you you got for me from somewhere i think oh yeah from uh puerto Vallarta. yeah yeah nice. and nice. yeah i mean the miss field goal. yeah yeah i remember yeah i someone got a hand on i it, was right? bummed about that probably for f days but hit the upright then the crossbar and then bounce the double back. Joint. well yeah. you did cry after the cubs won but that was a magical night. well that was amazing yeah I, yeah cr the cubs winning the world series is like a highlight of my life and that game went like what six hours like there was like a yeah it was unbelievable they, they had to suspend play for a while because of rain what well, yeah I, I think I, I cried the next day watching like the youtube videos not at the bar it was a little too drunk but i, I gotta say i there's my brother's a huge san francisco giants fan and so when I was in college and they won the Super Bowl. The, the <laughs> no, it's not the Super Bowl, it's, it's man. It's the World Series. The World Series <laughs> is baseball. Aaron, go to, Aaron, go back to Disneyland this shit? and uh, uh, jack off a mouse or yeah. something, you <laughs> asshole. <laughs> the Super Bowl. So when they won the Super Bowl, my brother, like the, the connection we had, he called me, he was like crying. It was so deep. Mm -hmm. yeah. But then at, on the, you know, at, at the same time, my brother, my brother Mark and I, when we go on Space Mountain together, and then afterwards we give each other this nod, that connection is just as deep. So. Yeah, it's good to have those. It's the connect, the, the yeah. bringing people together. I think is the cool part. Yeah, and you'd rather have like a first person experience with it. Like you want to be yeah. like if you were on the field, it'd be one thing. Yeah. But to yeah. just watch, yeah, it's a little too disconnected. I, I, get, I get jealous. I'm like, I want to be doing so something awesome. I get a yeah, little bit of that fun. too. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I'll kick that guy. And there's no yeah. way I would. But yeah. in my head, I'm like, there's this like ego part of me where I'm like, I'm. It's not even more pride than ego if you can differentiate the two. But I'm like. No, I want that to be me. Yeah, yeah. well, it's like I'll, I'll be I'll be watching. I'll get you. I'll be like, they're crushing it. Why am I not crushing it right now? Why am I sitting on a couch eating chips watching them crush it? Mm -hmm. That's something that gets me. Ben Branfin has a great bit where he says he loves sports because it's one of the only places where you go to just yell at millionaires. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like and just talk shit to millionaires and be like, you're a loser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, well, that was. And then sports too. They're so heartbreaking. Like in the Bengals game, that poor Asai guy. Oh yeah, who had the late hit on? Oh Mahomes. yeah, he was just like my yeah. heart instantly. His teammates were yelling at him. Did you see that clip? No, oh, I heard about it. One of the guys apologized. He was, he was like, he was like yelling at him, like, "Don't push the fucking yeah, quarterback." What the fuck are you pushing that? I would say, like, you're just touching the quarterback. That's what he was saying. Why are you touching the quarterback? But. I mean, if you're was running a huge 100 mistake. miles an hour and your adrenaline's up there. And he played a great game. He was like, I think he was amped up because he was uh, three plays earlier. I heard, I think it was Romo on the call or something. Who? Yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah. Was like a sigh saying his name all night. He's making an impact every time. And then boom, that flips. And he's like the goat and people are going to associate him with, you know, he's a little bucknery now where his name means you fucked up. Right. That's tough. It's tough.
But then I watched a clip from For Love of the Game, a Kevin Costner movie. A guy makes a mistake, and then Costner's like the badass old pitcher, and he's like, hey, don't let him make a joke out of you. Next time we come here, we'll beat the shit out of these guys. And, yeah. and then he ends up making a big play later in the game. So I'm, I'm hopeful that he can have a... The story is still being written. I, I got to say, I was rooting for Joe Burrow. I like Joe Burrow. He's cool, yeah, man. He's yeah, he's cool. He's cool yeah. as a motherfucker. Yeah. Coolest guy since JFK. He is badass. Ice in his veins. Good looking. Even keeled. Good style. Well, I guess the real yeah. question is then, has anybody gone on the Matterhorn, right? Is that one of the things? Mm -hmm. and yeah. And was so train. amped up when they got off that they downed a pile of shit. Oh, yeah. They I'm have. Sure, I'm sure. I'm Probably. sure. The one person was so amped, they got decapitated on it. Yeah. People have, yeah, people have lost their heads, literally. Has that really happened? Yeah. Yeah. So Wait, he was so Someone amped because he, well, he got out of his thing? He was so excited yeah, was that so he pumped. stood up and his head got chopped off. He was off. like, this is so fucking great. Yeah, yeah. And then bang, his head was off. Where was that? Disneyland? Matterhorn. Yeah. Oh. And you know what yeah. Disneyland does? Because they, they, they maintain it's the happiest place on earth. So you can't die there because that would mean sadness yeah, lives sad. there. Yeah. So they pumped his body full of adrenaline and they hit him with the defibs just yeah. to artificially keep his heart going. Yeah. And then once they got him off the premises... They let him die so yeah. they could keep like when Costner was this, when was for love this? of the game, keep their perfect game intact. And, and one of the castmates, no death. one of the castmates, that's a term for a Disney employee. One of the castmates put his head back onto his body. So he was like, sort of like, oh, he's still alive. Crazy. Oh. You know, as they were going out and, and sort of was like trying to connect the veins and stuff. So they're still and the spine. They had, yeah, they had Goofy around yeah. the waist, pulling the body up. Yeah. And yeah. then they had um, <laughs> Mickey holding the head down creating yeah. that yeah. creating that that, that pressure that connection. yeah and i heard they injected viagra into him so he had a nice heart on so everybody's all that guy can't be dead he's <laughs> yeah. he's right hard like matthew mcconaughey's dad yeah you talked about dicks yeah he's gonna talk about dicks. we should have a dick jar like every time i say dick or talk about <laughs> yeah. dicks you gotta fuck a jar five bucks i gotta fuck a jar yeah or th i was saying like throw like <laughs> throw a some dollar money in there it. yeah if, if we do ten dollars $10, that could get expensive. Joe, do you get tired of us talking about your dick? No, I, I enjoy it. I, I like it. Um, and, yeah, you and like I, it. And I, 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 ho oh, I, hope the it right, I hope the right person hears the information and is intrigued. And She's out there. And then brother. we get married. Mm. She's driving. I think, I think that'd be great. Can <laughs> can I, yeah. She's can driving I, a John Deere tractor right yeah. now listening yeah. to the pod. My kind of woman. Can I'm I cause that. some controversy here? Yeah. You know, we all, you guys always, you guys treat Joe's, Joe's dick it's like sort of like a God complex Yeah, it's here. like royalty. Well, I mean, it I'm not a, disputing that you could have a big dick. You look like somebody alive. that might have, uh, he's coming alive. Oh yeah. We're talking, we're back on dick. You might have a big dick or you might not, but you've never shown us your dick. You've never whipped it out. And I feel like everybody's just worshiping. Your giant dick, but nobody's seen your giant dick. How do we confirm that your dick is huge or you're just putting it out there to get everybody to think you have a big no, dick? No, I mean, it's been described in detail because I, I told JT a very intimate story years ago that he shared with the entire world. Oh, you saw it? <laughs> no, no. So so I will say, okay, so first... There's a backstory to the, how this started. Here, I, here's all the evidence I need. One... I trust Joe and I don't think Joe would lie about something like this. He, he, he came to me in confidence and he said, look, man, I'm having kind of a health issue. I can't find condoms that fit. I was instantly intrigued. I said, are they too big? Or are they too small? <laughs> Hoping for a specific answer. And, and it turned out to be the case. He said, they're too small. I was amped. I said, what about the Magnums? He said, they're too tight. They don't fit. And then we were going to a party. He said, let's keep this between you and I. <laughs> that sounds like a good way to convince somebody you have a huge cock. <laughs> I kicked out. But, 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 I, of course, there's a part of me that's a cynic, right? There's 10% of me that's like, Joe knows I'm a loud mouth. He knows if he tells me that, I'm going to spread the good word and let everybody know that, the, that my boy's got a hammer. But I know a few females who have been intimate with Joe. A few numbers. Big time pussy slayer. Joe got and, sucked. <laughs> and they've told me that it's more than myth. Did they give what, details? Yeah, what do they uh, say exactly? I gotta, I gotta say, I gotta say and this surprised me, they don't care as much as we do. <laughs> so they don't get into shape. 
They don't get into vascularity. They don't get into coloration. They just say, they, I just talked to them a couple months after the fact. And I'm like, oh, yeah, hey, you and Joe had a little rhythm that night. And they go, oh, my God, his dick is huge. Really? That's what Did they, they really say like that? Oh, now he has a smile on <laughs> yeah. his face. Look, here's how you can solve it. Because I like the excitement in it. If go they're... into the bathroom. Yeah, it's 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 a little sick game you have. Yeah. Go into the bathroom and show. <laughs> Joe just John looked at me like he was hard. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw your sex face. It was it was hot. That was not a oh. sex face. You looked at me. and You went like this. You went. Eh. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, I've heard I've heard from different women that Joe is a. Uh, Packing a monster, and then show they it. got no reason. Whip it out. No, he's I don't a want modest to meet, guy. No, I don't want to meet your hero. I don't want to meet yeah. my hero. You don't want to meet your hero. No. Well, a lot of people are disappointed by their heroes when they meet him. Exactly. That's I, why he doesn't. Yeah, yeah. It's better in my mind. It's yeah. I, I, it's. I. I. What I are you no, imagining in your I mind? I have no doubt that it's huge. I just like to think about what it could be. Well, let's pivot yeah. off that. Have you ever met any of your heroes, Kev? Any of my heroes. No, not really. I I don't even know who I consider. Do you my heroes. have a hero? You don't seem like a guy who would have a hero. I know who this hero mean, is. What do you mean, Kevin? What do you mean by hero? Like you, like someone you look up to for like moral courage and who sets uh, an example of what it means to be a good person. Says, I don't idolize anybody like that. But I do have people like I'm obsessed with. Like I was obsessed with the, the Cros David Crosby who just died. I was I'm obsessed with like Crosby. I'm, I'm obsessed with things. But I think Crosby might have been helped write Hey Joe. So so. Huh? Some uh, weird connectivity there. Uh, hey, Joe. You, you love the song. You like uh, David Crosby a lot? He was a wild man, right? Wasn't he a shit star? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's a very interesting life. I, I mean, I wouldn't consider... I don't know if he's my hero, but the, I, I get fixated on some people. But I don't know if... Uh, I don't have, like, a, a person that I'm... Like, this guy's my, my hero. I like Steve Young. I wore his jersey when the Niners lost this weekend. Great guy. Yeah, Steve Young. It's a shame we didn't see him when he was faster. Who's your hero? Longer in the NFL. For me, it used to be like Christopher Hitchens, Pat Tillman. Um, I'm trying to think people in my personal life who I looked up. I look up to Chad a lot. I think, uh, I'm, you know, but is he my parents Chad are your hero? Kind of, yeah. And uh, then my parents are complicated, but I, there, I have moments where I find both of them to be extraordinarily heroic but i know them too intimately and know their faults as well so it's hard to just put them on a pedestal like that uh but yeah no i've, I've had heroes but christopher hitchens who was my hero for a little bit in his book his memoir he said it was ridiculous to have heroes it real mm. he was real i do have it. admiration for like so if you if you said who are your heroes right now i would say the the people in iran the women in iran that are uh uh trying to overthrow the government uh, or the dictatorship uh, right now, so those you got a are tatted people. On yeah, you, let's right? see. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Tattoo. Tattoo. Yeah, I got yeah. a tattoo. So I haven't seen this in person. Um, it looks like wow. uh, it looks so like you have to look. You the... have to look at it. It's like it's 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 right to left. I'll make one joke and then I'm and then, but I'm, I'm actually impressed by this. It, it looks like the no, 98 degrees it. guy's tattoo. Huh? <laughs> like huh? the 98 degrees guy. Yeah. Oh guys yeah. Wait, degrees, can somebody show me that? Maybe it is. Maybe that's why I got it. Yeah. Maybe he was ahead of the curve on that. Yeah. So, so you've been extremely moved by all that. You've, uh, sorry, I'm gonna. It's more than all that, but like you've been extremely moved by the movement, right? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think every uh, Persian or Iranian person is fixated on it and has been fixated on it for like the last. It's been a long time. It's been a, like since the se summer? September. Yeah. What, so. What's yeah? Where's what's the situation these days? And why do you think there's not more media coverage on it? Well, because there's the it's not they're not what we're not white. I mean, if it's Ukraine, there's a lot of coverage on it. I still think because a lot of um, Persian people in the U.S. and around the world are really talking about it a lot that it is getting coverage. Yeah. Um, but it's also something these kind of things have an ebb and flow. So some weeks there's a lot of protests and uprisings and, uh, you know, some weeks like right now, it's you don't see much and then things happen. Um, with these dictatorships, things are sort of weird. You never know when something's going to happen. Um, but yeah, no, something in the Middle East is never going to um, grab the people's attention like something in Europe. Um, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not really looking in the negative part of it. I think it's a, it's the most positive thing we've seen, you know, at least in my lifetime. I, I was convinced if you asked me a year ago that I would never even. 
uh, you know, even think that I would never go there in my lifetime. Um, and now there's like a little bit of hope, mm. you know, cause my whole family's, uh, you know, essentially disconnected from me. So we have uh, like, I have a couple uncles and, in LA and stuff, but otherwise my entire family is in Iran and I've never met him. Mm. Uh, I had, um, you know, and it's personally affecting you. One of my cousins, uh, they, uh, she was protesting. Um, th they essentially just kidnapped her in the middle of the night. So they broke into her house in the middle of the night, um, and threw her in jail. Um, she was in, uh, prison for like a month. Um, and she finally got released. Uh, but I mean, She's probably going, th the whole country is going through a massive trauma. Um, and, you know, it's all just for basic, like, do you, ha do I, not just, the, the main thing is like, do I have to wear a headscarf or not? That's what people are saying because they're protesting against the hijabs, but it's everything. They don't have, they don't have freedom of anything. They're, there's not even, there's no comedy clubs in Iran. And then that's sort of, that's sort of what I'm been sort of focused on the last you know, several months. Mm -hmm. And then it's weird to juxtapose it to people here who have freedom and they complain about every fucking thing. Like every little thing everybody complains about, oh, we're not free. You know, the government's doing this, this and that. Well, she, she was just protesting for women's rights and she got thrown in a, in a shit prison for, for 30 days. Um, and who knows what they're doing to the people in there. They're probably, you know, uh, doing very horrible things, especially to the women in there. Um, so, uh, you know, it's that and dick. Those are the two things I'm focused on. Mm. <laughs> it's, it's remarkable okay. range. Yeah. <laughs> so, and so you, but you think um, this is leading to change? You think there's going to be? Yeah, I, I think the you know I, who knows, but I, I think the regime is over. The dictatorship's over. That's it's good. just a question of when. You know, yeah. because they're not just going to give it up. Um, they're brutal and mm -hmm. they will, they're killing people right now. They're just, they do these sham trials where they're just uh, hanging people and just young people like you and me who are just politically active. So it, uh, um, but I am, again, I, I, a year ago, I didn't think I would ever be able to visit there. And, you know, now daddy's boning up on his far C, you know, mm -hmm. so uh uh you know i'm i'm getting ready to go there and uh, I'll, I'll 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 return there are you going to protest no i mean when the, <laughs> i i'm not going until the regime is toppled just to like visit right. to visit there yeah. to see where yeah. i'm from i've never seen where i'm from yeah. you know you know what bums me out too i don't know why my brain goes here cuz i want to be optimistic that there will be lasting positive change but like even when did the shah get thrown out like 79 yeah, the Shah was overthrown in 79. And then initially that was like like college educators and like progressives who it, were behind it. And then... It's a little more nuanced than that. Right, but let me just break through it and then you can correct me. Uh, and, then, and then more... Like then deeper religious zealots took over the revolution and kind of in, uh, put in even stricter policies domestically. And I, and I see that happen in a lot of places where like the tip of the spear for these things is like positive forward thinking people. But then like th inevitably they get uh, mutated or overtaken by like m darker and, and m even more authoritarian. Yeah. Forces. I mean, that was a problem in the first place because the Shah was installed there. So in Iran before that, there was some sort of a um democratic system where they had uh, a guy named Mossadegh and he was elected as the the leader of Iran it was in the 50s but he was um a socialist and in the 50s socialist you know communism all that stuff in you know America or the west was the um enemy. yeah was the enemy and <laughs> the other thing in Iran is they were the they feared that um, the socialism they would nationalize their oil so Britain that's where all the yeah, money so they get a lot of oil from there so they said fuck yeah. this um, and they went and uh, helped overthrow them and then they they put in the Shah there was a the Shah was there before him too but they they put in um, the former Shah's son I believe and that Shah was sort of like a mixed bag so on the one hand he was very close to the west he uh, was you know 
you see pictures in Iran when my parents lived there and they were growing up. It was, you know, you don't have to wear it. There's no religious litmus test or anything like that. People were generally free. But on the other end of that, the Shah was not a democratically elected leader. So he was imprisoning, um, you know, his uh, enemies. Uh, part of the he was imprisoning the, the religious people who would end up coming and, and taking over. The prison that my cousin just got out of was actually constructed by the Shah in the early 70s to hold political prisoners. And now, you know, other people are now the Islamic regime is being used for it. So I think the in 79, when there was, you know, and I'm not an expert on this. This is just my understanding. The 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 college students, the people who wanted democracy and all that were sort and were against the Shah, but also the religious people. Right. And my understanding is that the the students and the liberals, they just weren't organized enough or maybe they're a little naive. So when it actually happened, the religious people were more uh, the crazy religious people were more organized. The Ayatollah um, uh, piece of shit was living in France or, or Iraq at the time. And I they were he was organizing and uh, I, I did, the other side wasn't organizing. So then you get to the. Similar things happen, like the Arab Spring happened. Joe, you're following the Arab Spring. You yeah, know, you know the Arab is, Spring a few years ago. I've yeah. heard of the Arab Spring. So yeah. what Same happened deal. with that, right? Like, yeah. there's no organized thing to. Yeah. So then the brute force, like institutional powers, kind of come in and so, they're like, "We know how to do this." What I would say is might be different. Is the real answer is I have no fucking idea. I don't know what's going on in there. I don't know if there's people organizing underground. But what I can tell you is, um, uh, Persians are are some of the. Uh, we can figure it out. Um, the diaspora of Persians around the world. If, if you've been to Beverly Hills, uh, we essentially own Beverly Hills. Okay. If you go to... I've been there. Uh, you've been there. You see a lot of Persians there, right? Yeah. You're from Orange County. A lot of Persians in Laguna, all that. Mm -hmm. um, my hope would be that we're able to organize with obviously the people that are able to overthrow the government. And hopefully this would happen. And the people who were sort of exiled from there because a lot of the very smart people from Iran, they don't want to be there. So they just go and they do good stuff in other countries. Um, so, I mean, I guess all I could say is I'm hopeful that it would be different. They could get some help from, uh, you know, the West or, or our country or, or Europe to sort of develop institutions. Um, but who knows? But I, I mean, it, it you, you're saying it could get worse. I don't know how it could get no, worse no, no, than a, I'm, like an no, Islamic no, and it, dictatorship. And it, it's, yeah, it's like and it, ISIS. And I'm, I think I'm trying to see the bigger picture, but I'm missing the real heart of the story, which is that these people are fighting for a more just and free Iran. And, and at this point, that's enough. We don't need to worry about what's going to come around the corner. For me, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a sign that, you know, and I just don't know how this sustains. The, the dictatorship's going to be, um, you know, I don't know how they're going to maintain power over the long run. I don't, it just doesn't make sense. They can keep killing people. I see in the short term how they can be brutal and sort of quell it. Um, but I just don't see on the long run how this sustains. So what I'm trying to say is daddy's daddy's coming home. Okay, let's go. And it's because of these brave heroes uh, in, in Iran um, it, the only reason I'm here is because of that dictator. If the dictatorship didn't happen, I would have been, well, I wasn't born yet, but I would have probably been in Iran. So, um, this sort of protest thing is sort of, a how a lot of us are connecting with it. Mm. Hell was yeah. that too much? Was that too much? Uh, is your audience doesn't like, you want to go back to Dick? <laughs> I think that was the <laughs> perfect, I think that was the perfect load. Was a perfect load. Yeah, that counteracts all the dick talk. Now it's mm -hmm. now it's balanced. Yeah. Now we could go either way. Here. Joe, what are your thoughts? I think it's cool. Uh, you haven't. Do you have like aunts and uncles that you've never met, or like distant relatives? Or, I've like... never met any of my uh, only only uncle. Well, so I have the few uncles in L.A., but I have a huge family in Iran. Most of them are in Iran. I have one uncle in Norway. I met him. But all basically all my cousins and aunts and uncles, basically I would say like 
80 to 90% of my family's in Iran that I've never met. Oh, I'm wow. Facebook. I'm on Facebook and Instagram with them. Yeah, that'd be great to but, meet them. Like That's... growing up here, I didn't have, we had very tiny family here just because, you know, everybody was, was not here. So, you know, my parents were in college here in the 70s. I think their plan was to go back. And then in the middle of that, the, the Islamic dictatorship uh, happened. Oh, so, so they're like, they fuck stayed. that. Yeah. yeah. Why, why are we, we're not going back to that shit. Yeah. It's good they stayed. Yeah, you know, I couldn't talk dick out there, though. Yeah. So no. imagine a world. There's a lot of Persian guys. Persian guys are very weird. If you've met a lot of Persian, all of us are pretty weird. Imagine being in a country where you can't <laughs> freely, like, express your weirdness. Like, yeah, a lot of suppressed weirdness. There's a weirdness. lot of people that want to just be screaming. Uh, it's called Kir in, in Farsi, Kir. So yeah, they want to scream it from the rooftop. I don't think I ever really put it into the the historical context that you're talking cock for those who can't. Mm, yeah. The and what about the women? The women can't. You talk about the men in there. Women can't talk dick. They can't they talk can't back. They can't talk flaps. They can't talk meat curtains. No, they, they can't, can't talk <laughs> clits. They can't talk They actually bush. just... There was a... There was a I'm going to bring it down again, but there's a couple in there and they... They just like did a video of and posted it of them just dancing like in the street. You can't. It's illegal to dance there. What? So they were dancing with and it, now a man and a woman that are not married and they're dancing in the street. And I think they were just sentenced to like ten or eleven years in prison. Jesus Christ! What just for that? Yeah, that's. So I, I mean, again, the continuing people that have been complaining in this country over the last couple of years about uh, uh, about shit. Um, I uh, it, it's it's. It's different in other places. Do you think the the maybe an image of you getting sucked off by old Ben That's will what, be like a, a symbol of hope for them? I thought it would be, but <laughs> did anybody even? Uh, who knows what's going on? I, did, does anybody in Catalina even seen our show? Did, I don't know. I mean, there's like twelve people who live there. I, I know, know, but I you, yeah, what's the population? The I mean, you'd think we'd be getting a parade by now. You know what? They they were funny because I remember the day before we shot that, I went out to the, I went out to the bars and I was like doing like first person research i was like yo like what would be something they were like wary of me i tried to be friendly but they were like is is this guy trying to make fun of us i was like yo like what would be something an outsider could do that would make him like uh you know in violation of catalina's culture yeah that sounds a little creepy to the locals yeah, probably it was a tough yeah. it was a tough thing to throw at them i didn't know how else to phrase it and they were like they were like huh what and then i was like well right now our plan is is to like hump old ben and they all loved it oh really <laughs> yeah oh, okay. the, all, the, all the there wasn't a better suggestion yeah. from the group they were all like that's it hump, <laughs> hump old ben old ben's their their famous mascot seal that died and now they got a statue of him well i, I feel like your listeners should know that oh you were talking about you explaining it to them to the locals to the lo okay good i i had a uh, traumatic experience with one of your um you want to tell a story with one of the yeah, locals? No, no, not with them. I just, I just popped in. It's just a random <laughs> tangent. You remember I told you I was playing with some high school. I was playing Call of Duty with some high schoolers accidentally. Mm. <laughs> I was on. You know, you're on the Xbox, and then somebody sends you an Xbox invite. So I, I didn't know who it was, and I, I was trying to click off of it, and I clicked onto it. So all of a sudden, I'm, I'm in, I'm in a party, okay, and he's all. You know, it sounds like one of your Stoker like fans. He's oh, da, da, da. and so I thought, oh, he's a fan, and and he was excited. He's all, oh, he's in here, fuck, he's gonna play with us. So I was like, oh, okay, nice, yeah. I, I mean, you know, you got me in here. I, it was an accident for me to be in here, but Daddy will play a couple games with you guys. You know, thinking, hey, this must be pretty cool of them. You know, playing Call of Duty with the guy that was on their TV, and then um, so we're playing. <laughs> and then uh, i i slowly find out like i'm just asking him, hey did you like the show blah 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 um so he was one high the guy who invited me um i guess maybe watches us bag sometimes or something or listen to your podcast he's all no i've only seen like one episode and then i'm like what about the other guys he's all, he's all, they they don't know you they don't know the, about the show they don't know oh you guys should watch the show so i'm playing on that even your fans they're not even watching the show yeah D to watch the fucking show guys you're listening to the podcast you're not watching the show yeah that's weird i hear you yeah. and i and then and then i was in a situation where i was like oh my god these guys think uh, what do these guys think of me i'm just this random dude playing with a bunch of high schoolers they're probably not thinking about it too much 
Well, I was thinking about it. I'm like, why am I playing with the, these three high schoolers? And then he, he was talking about one of them's like, my yeah, my brother lives in L.A. He's a he's a, he's, a, he's got a really cool job in the industry. Yeah, he gets should... coffee for the on set. He gets coffee for people. Yeah, like, you... what the fuck, man? Yeah, you should meet that guy. No, you can't get any. It was it was you know. You expected a little more of like a some fanfare. Well, I was building myself up. I was like, th-, you know what I'm saying? I was building. I, I was like, and you oh. felt like you were doing them a favor. You're yeah, like, I was I'm about like, this. Uh, you with this my might presence. be pretty cool. And then it spawned. Oh, you it and spawned, like, and now I'm, a, I'm just like this weirdo playing with a, a bunch of fucking year old sixteen year olds hanging year old. out with. I'm talking about what years. colleges they're going to and and shit like that. And they know they have no. It's basically. Oh, and then one of their friends popped in. The their fourth guy was gonna be like, "Is all who this guy? Who's this guy?" And then the one guy was trying to explain who I was, and I was like, "This is, you know, so, uh, it's, how did he, it's humbling." How, how did he explain it? I don't even remember. It's it's Can just I try? It, it wasn't. He's um, like, "What's up, dudes? Yeah, yeah it's my oh, buddy Cav. Yeah. You guys might know him. He was on a TV show on Netflix, and like he was in this one episode. That's and, a crazy uh, voice. And he like he like humped all this shit, man. I don't even see and, saw, saw that episode. He said he's only got one episode through. He didn't even see that. He's like, dude, he was. He, I heard he's on this show that I almost watched. Yeah. Dude. Ah, uh, guys, it's a cool if he plays with those. <laughs> <laughs> His friends are like, who? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I guess it's too long, maybe because everybody's watching the TikTok stuff. So nobody wants to like go sit down and watch a, a show. I mean, who knows? Yeah, I mean, like if you look at the Oscars this year, it's the second worst Oscar year I think in history behind last year. Like yeah. some of these movies, I'm like, what? I like, watched one of them this weekend. The yeah. uh, Everywhere, Somewhere. Is that good? Uh, it was everything all the time or something. Yeah, it it was it was a good movie. Um, I don't know <clears throat> if I would consider it like oh. This is like, I would I would want this movie. I would consider it like an Oscar winning movie. Um, Top Gun Maverick should win. I think so too. I think I think really everything that, everywhere all at once. That's for best picture. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, but I think they I think they even threw that in just because they were like, look, no one's seen these other movies. If we don't throw Top Gun in there, yeah. no oh, one's Gun. gonna watch the Oscars. Wait, Top yeah. Gun got nominated for best mm-hmm. movie? Because now they do ten too. So oh, they do. Yeah. I feel like that's so the only movie got, anybody watched. I don't I, think that should win an Oscar. I I, I enjoyed I it, the experience I the second time I had to go see it, but I it, I don't mean to be, a, but you have to go on twenty, right? Oh, okay. Oh, we only have twenty minutes. Aaron's got to go one thirty. Okay. All right, no beefs this week, guys. We're going straight into babes and legends. Chad, who is your babe of the week? Uh, my babe of the week is the people who I'm trying to pull it up right now. Uh. So on Barstool, they'll have like, they'll have, they'll have like man on the street bits or whatever, or like podcast bits that they'll post. And my legend of the week are the people who have sports related comments on it when it's like them trying to do like a funny prank or whatever. And they'll just out of nowhere, they'll go, yeah, I agree. After yesterday's games, it should make it for an interesting Super Bowl between the Eagles and Chiefs. And um, uh, this just fell flat, but I think they're funny. I don't know what you were. What were you? Uh, in Barstool, when they try to post like man on the street content or whatever, the, or like prank stuff. And then people are like, this is a sports page. Why don't you post sports content? And then the comments will just be like them talking about sports. In the con- I can't fucking do it. I think I get it. I don't. Who's the baby? I don't, don't want to talk about it anymore. Babe? It sucks, Joe. No, let's sit with this. First. <laughs> I don't want it. I'm done. Let's it sit with it, no, brother. It, it sucks, brother. We were here. It sucks, brother. We're it listening. sucked. Move on to Joe. Joe, what do you think Chad meant by that? <laughs> I can't I, explain I, I it. I couldn't figure it. I out. understand. I can't explain it. I understand. You get it, Aaron. It went over my, the commenters who are taking it into their own hands. I don't know if it's a babe. They're the, of the babes. Week. They're babes. Yeah, they're the babes. Uh, they're, they're, they're the babes. babes. Oh, okay. okay. Is that what you meant? Yeah. It's more like this is something I think was amusing than a babe. Yeah, I have been. I've done three hundred babes, so well, we don't need to get defensive. Here. And then what he's done on the podcast uh, too. Huh? <laughs> oh. I still want to, you're still a dilf to me. Thank you. That was nice. Joe, who's your babe of the week? Uh, I got two babes of the week. My two babes oh. of the week are Jones Hollywood and the Dresden. 
two classic Hollywood restaurants. I, I haven't been going out much at all. So this week with my birthday, I decided to go out twice. So did uh, Jones and the Dresden. And these are just great. I mean, just the layouts of these places and the atmospheres and the dining rooms and the lighting and the food, just fantastic. And I love that we have uh, these kind of restaurants out here in Hollywood. Jones is a, every time you yeah. walk in there, it's like timeless. Yeah. Great place. Yeah. Same with the Dresden. Awesome. Every, everyone at Jones looks like they're having a good time. Who's there? Like you, you just do a lap around the place and you look at every table and you can tell it's like a big night out. Yeah. For it's everybody. a fun vibe. Yeah. Cool. Couples, groups, the whole nine. Yeah. And then just people like, yeah, the bar is always crowded. Everyone's all posted up. And then there's like those low seats right behind the bar, those couches. They got weird tables there too. Yeah. Yeah. But it's fun. Good times. You talk to any ladies there? There were, I mean, there were some there. Um, yeah, that wasn't that girl, Amir's. Uh, oh, yeah, buddy, yeah. She came by. Dresden, I didn't, we didn't really talk to any. No. Oh. Damn. I've seen you take some swings there. Yeah, oh, yeah. In the Remember past, when I that's hooked up sure. with that girl after the Dresden? You said she looked like Cartman. <laughs> trying to remember was it like outside I made, I made out with two girls oh yeah because she was, was wearing she was street? wearing a blue winter hat that's mm -hmm. why oh, okay. like i made out with two girls i night. mean you might be the only one who's black made out. out on a on a dresden night i, I don't know if it... blacked out of my mind oh no i have you've made out yeah. oh with the um, like uh like uh the like uh milf that's out in her booth yeah oh nice yeah that time when i had like what my, was her name my wrist guard on from a softball when i broke <laughs> my arm jocelyn or uh dorothy well, i can't remember name. her name but Jocelyn's yeah was, a pretty name. that was a great night i think that yeah. was kevin's birthday like uh, a few years ago joe do you do a lot of tongue when you kiss i try not to that you don't want to do that but i mean sometimes you come in hard like swinging way too hard i don't know where i get that from i just get way too aggressive but no i well you're a max effort player i, I mean i know that i know field. you gotta tone it down but you know what wait for them to tell you to tone it down because you're coming in with all your primal force yeah but i can tell that when it's like too much it's not here kiss it, me right it's now. also not good kiss when me you right now we'll see come yeah here. kiss him come here shut up come here no come all right, weirdo. But yeah, when the because when the tongues collide too hard, it's kind of a weird sensation. So you you I think you know when you're doing too much tongue. Not for me. Let me taste that DNA. Let me see what your code <laughs> is like. Do you do a little swirling with the tongue, or are you hitting the tongue? Are you uh, waving? Oh yeah, I f yeah, like a fast swirl. Oh, so it's like you're swirling. Is she swirling her tongue too? Yeah, I think they. So look, like I think they swirl? go on my pace usually. I, I always okay. feel like I'm leading the pace. He's got the all the pitches. Yeah, I I mean, he's got pace. off speed stuff. He's got straight down the middle speed. I think women. He's got a Mariano let the guy Rivera cutter. Set the pace. Ever on the, bite on the, the tongue on the French. He's got the twelve six. No, I never bit the tongue. Tongue action. You never bite the tongue. Do they want that? I don't know. I don't. I don't. No, know what don't they bite want. the tongue. I'm just yeah, saying. no, that hurts. Maybe the nibble on the lip or something. A little something. nibble on the lip, a little yeah. sexy boy action. Oh, Joe, you do a little nip lip? I haven't done do that. That's like a, that's, that Go seems like there. a fuck boy move. Joe, do you make a lot of noise when you come? Like ah, I've been heard in the past. <laughs> heard by who? <laughs> like old roommates. I remember them saying something. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they heard ah. me. So you think yeah. your neighbors hear you coming? Well, I've heard him before too. No, not the neighbors, but just like if what does he around. sound like when he he's coming? Go for I don't it. just like when he's working out, pretty much just like the, a bench just press? the grunts, yeah, like a. <laughs> Like that. Yeah, some, yeah, somewhere along those lines. Like, oh, God, this feels so funny. God yeah, but how is he going to hear that? It has to be louder You're than that. Well, I'm yelling it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, who's your babe of the week? Um, My babe of the week is, besides the Iran stuff, the Harry, uh, my son. Uh, or is it his name? Uh, he is... Uh, he's drumming. He knows He knows how to drum. He, he goes to a nice beat um, drumming stuff, and he just rolled over. For the first time, from his back to his belly. Oh, great! Ah. so uh, yeah, that's exciting. Things are progressing, and uh, uh, that's awesome, dude. He, he actually had his first kiss too. <laughs> he kissed someone? No, I. No, he Garf didn't. Yeah, he kissed Garf. Yeah, Garf. Oh. Garf actually gives him kisses. My dog goes up to him and kisses him. Oh. 
Uh, go, go ahead. Go ahead. M- my babe of the week is um, when you're reading a book and it's a serious book, it's an adult book, but you are, and you're trying to be an adult while reading it, but you realize, you know, this thing's a bear. It's going to take a while to get through. And then you're in the middle of the book. You don't see it coming but you just hit a series of photos or pictures mm. and then they got a blank page after the pictures and then they got the title of the next chap. They got the next chapter page and you just cruise through 12 pages in five seconds. And all of a sudden the end goal is totally within sight. Yeah, so like- <laughs> I'm a, I'm a huge fan of serious books, adult books, but that have some pictures in them that kind of lighten the the reading load and make it all seem more, you know, achievable. I like that. I remember like in school growing up oh, when, when you'd see pictures and like blank oh. pages, you'd be like, all yeah. right, I'm getting, we're moving along. Yeah, they're, they're, here. Like, yeah. they're like, this <laughs> that's is, so, that's so funny. They're it's like, a, this that is, brings up that. Yeah. They're like, this is Lyndon B. Johnson when he was a kid, 10 photos of him with like his dad and his mom, you know, yeah, keep, keep around some coming. kind of, you <laughs> is know, that what you're reading, you're reading LBJ's biography. No, I'm reading actually this book about a uh, Edvard Munch, the painter. And, oh, uh, yeah. and they put his paintings in that's the middle cool, of it. Man. And I was like, and I, and I was like, yeah, give me all the paintings. Just just keep loading them up. And uh, it was uh, it was great. It made it so much, just like, it just breathed energy to me. And I was like, I can finish this fucking book. Sounds like a shit book. It's great. Oh, it's great. Okay. It's no, just it's long. really good. It's actually kind of short. Oh, uh, okay. But it's heady. Chad, who's your legend of the week? My legend of the week is, uh, it's myself for, uh, I got a new dog and show my dog who's daddy. Oh yeah, you, yeah, you got to establish. That. I'm gonna come over this week, and I'm I'm gonna observe you in action. Oh uh, yeah, I'm showing her who's daddy. I mean, and she's the cutest golden retriever ever. She's just adorable, and it's easy. And look, I spoil her. You know, we snuggle nonstop, but I also show her who's daddy. Yeah, you got to show that, her daddy, and that's important. You know, I don't put up with any shenanigans. You know, you try to play keep away from me with rocks in your mouth. <laughs> you're not getting past daddy with that shit all right i'm gonna pull that rock out and i'm gonna prevent your ass from choking you know and she cries in the crate i'm like cry it out baby because you were staying in that crate because daddy's gotta train you so that's me just being a beast dominating my dog with positive reinforcement nice has your dog seen your cock yet oh yeah okay good following the steps um joe legend yeah legend of the week i didn't have one prepared because i thought we were had to leave but i'll just say uh <laughs> the uh, yeah, yeah uh, i'll just say all the stokers of stoke nation out there you guys are legends and make sure you guys watch their netflix show uh oh, subscribe to their youtube channel if you haven't done that do all the things that help these guys out be be a fan but also like be an active fan thanks i would say yeah amen uh appreciate that dude kevo legend of the week legend is different than babe it's basically the same uh oh yeah it could be like the same brock purdy oh yeah man he was a legend um coming in as a rookie like that Coming in a rookie, getting the NFC Championship game, being cool and collected. He tore his UCL. I've never even heard of that, but yeah, I mean, it's one of the CLs. So, yeah, and, and he's Is still, that like Tommy John? Oh. And he was oh, still okay. in the end of the game throwing it like three or four yards. He gutted uh, it out. He had yeah, to go back I in. I mean, uh, very impressed by him. Is he the quarterback next year? The, or tr- I think he is. I mean, I, I, I think it's his to... His to lose, I think. I, I don't. I don't know what's gonna happen with Garoppolo, but I feel like Garoppolo is gonna be gone. I don't see how Trey Lance, with his performance against the Bears, at the was he the quarterback during the Bears? Yeah, that was that first game in the, in the rain. But it was also that weather. But yeah, I'm on the Purdy train. Um, and uh, 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 I even with the loss, I thought it was uh, impressive by him. He's cool and collected, and I, I uh, he's a, he's a legend. Oh, and David Crosby, rest in peace. Um, and uh, it, I re- highly recommend a documentary called, uh, I think it's called Remember My Name. It's a David Crosby documentary, and you should check it out. 
Cameron Crowe produced it, right? It's it's, oh, okay. it's one of the it's basically like a documentary uh, biography of him and Crosby, Stills and Nash. And I know you guys don't listen to that shit, but um, I do. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 I'm they, talking about your listeners. Yeah, but, they listen to stuff where you can yeah. you gotta go like this. It's a really good documentary. Oh right, they're more like. Yeah, I don't know. Can I see a doc on? Um, we got some outdoorsy people. I think they're rocking that shit. Uh, my legend of the week is. The studio, goodbye, my friend. Oh, yeah. It was an honor being here. It was an honor performing in this room. Goodbye to this apartment. It was good times. I'll always have memories from here. I don't get sad when I move or leave a place. I think it's kind of natural. But, uh, but yeah, we had some great memories in here. Yeah, and you're here about two years, right? Two years, yeah. almost on the dot. So it was a nice place. And uh, my legend of the week is, uh, is this place, this room. It's good times. Yeah, great times. Chat, what's well, your quote of the week? I think we got to run out. We got to run? Yeah. Okay. Uh, guys, thank you for joining us in this studio. We will be back at ATC and then in a new studio at some point in the future. So, But you know, remember to subscribe to the channel if you're watching. Watch it on YouTube. Thank you, Kevin and Joe, for yeah. bringing your you know varying size dicks in here and yeah. dropping your loads. Thanks a lot, bros. And... Uh, yeah, guys, keep writing reviews. Keep being legends. Thanks for listening. If you need advice, these guys are